Okay, let us uh, start about our topic, the planar antennas. Uh, I think you have already been introduced about the basics of antennas and uh, you must be seeing uh, lots of antennas uh, in your surroundings and the most common being the dish antenna. Uh, then uh, what are the other antennas you come across? in your surroundings. Yagi antenna, any other one? Dipole, uh, simple dipole. Okay. And then there are various types are there depending upon the radiation characteristics. The dish antenna is the one of the best ones so far as uh, the size is concerned and the associated beam width is concerned it gives you a very lot of gain for the size available over there. But the thing, uh, the main problem with these antennas is, although they are, uh, in fact, the one of the advantages with these antennas is that they are quite cheap to manufacture, just a metal sheet or a metal rod you need, okay. Uh, but one of the limitation of these antennas is that they are bulky. You must have seen uh, at the dish antenna that it is a curved surface, whereas the dipole antenna is mostly in the form of a rod. Even the Yagi antenna is, has number of uh, dipoles of different sizes. Uh, these antennas as such, they are not suitable for uh, personal applications, especially for let us say you want to use for backpack or for mobile, uh, let us say you want to paste an antenna or have an antenna in your, let us say the vehicle for aerospace application. For aerospace application, the antenna has to be lightweight, it has to be conformal. That is the major problem with these ones, that these are not conformal in the sense that they cannot be stick to the body of the surface. So, for example, uh, you are moving in a car, if you will put a dish antenna over there, then it will uh, experience a lot of wind when you move out and the structural stability will be a big problem over there, will be a big issue. You would like an antenna which you can stick it onto, let us say, the your uh, front panel or let us say where your this thing is there, your glass window is there. Okay. So, that is, that means these antennas are not conformal, they do not conform to the surface which you are using it, they have their own curvature. Okay. Secondly, the, their size is large, say if you want to carry it in the mobile, you cannot put a, uh, this dipole like this, mobile let us say if it is working at uh, 900 megahertz, we are uh, taking it around 1 gigahertz, wavelength will be 30 centimeter and lambda by 2 means 15 centimeter 6 inch, you need 6 inch of space okay. and the whole mobile is less than that. So, that is another limitation. So, for so many app, so, so, app, so applications, some applications like for your personal application for uh, vehicle uh, movement, you need antennas which are conformal, which are uh, uh, small or compact and they should be easy to manufacture also, cheap also. So, these are the limitations of uh, the antennas which we are using right now and that is why uh, these type of antennas which are called printed antennas, broad category, printed antennas have been developed. Uh, you must have seen the printed circuit board, you must have used it. So, you can use the same technology even you can use the same substrate also and instead of uh, making those uh, printed lines over there, you can just make a printed patch and if you design it properly, it will work as an antenna. And if you use the, for the board, if you use a thin board, thin substrate, then you can bend the antenna also that way and you can stick it to any surface, whether it is a card or flat 
So the antenna will work as such. That is you can use the existing printed circuit technology to uh, fabricate these antennas. <coughs> and as a result, because you are using the printed circuit technology, you can prepare a master just like you do it for the printed circuit. You can prepare a master and using that master, you can uh, get at many copy, as many copies as possible with the same master, which means that the performance of all these like 100 pieces you get from one master, all of these 100 pieces will have the same performance. But if you have to fabricate the antennas one by one, just like for the dish antenna or a rod antenna, because you are using mechanical engineering over there, no two antennas are going to be identical, exact. So their performance is going to vary. So that's one thing that is, uh, it becomes cheaper because you are using printed circuit technology and the performance is also repeatable from one piece to the other. That's one advantage with this thing. And naturally when you are using a thin substrate, uh, they, they will be lightweight also. You can use, uh, let's say if you use a 10 mil substrate, 10 mil means something like 0 0.01 inch. 1 mil is uh, 1 mil, uh, 1000 of an inch. So if you use 10 mil substrate, the substrate thickness will be 0 0.01 inch, uh, which means uh, how much? About 2 millimeter. So Will it be 2 millimeter or 0 0.2 millimeter? 0 0.01 inch, 0 0.02 centimeter, 0 0.2 millimeter. So thickness is just 0 0.2 millimeter. And uh, naturally, if it is 0 0.2 millimeter and the area is large, you can always bend it and stick to the surface which you are using for antenna mounting. So that's, uh, that's one of the big advantages. They are cheap to manufacture. They are lightweight, they are conformal, okay, and the performance is as good as your dipole antenna. That uh, you can say the wire dipole antenna. And another aspect is that if you design it properly, there are some new designs available, you can reduce the size even further. You do not have to have a minimum size which is uh, lambda by 2. With proper design, you can reduce the size and I think you can go up to lambda by 10. Those who are familiar with the electromagnetics microwaves, when we talk about the dimensions, we do not talk about the dimensions in millimeter or centimeter. It is in terms of the wavelength. The advantage is that uh, you can always scale down depending upon the frequency. If you say lambda by 8, lambda by 8 it is valid at uh, let us say 1 gigahertz, it is valid at 10 gigahertz also and since the wavelength will decrease at higher frequency, corresponding dimension will decrease, lambda by 8 will decrease, okay. So in electromagnetics, especially at higher frequencies, microwaves, etc., instead of giving the dimensions in terms of millimeter or centimeter or inch, we always talk in terms of the relative to the wavelength. And it has another, another meaning also when we describe it in terms of wavelength. Because uh, most of these uh, uh, circuits or antennas uh, at higher frequencies, uh, the, we, normally we want to have a circuit size which is comparable to the wavelength only, not more than that, except for some cases like filter applications, etc. Uh, where if you want to have a very good performance, then you have to go to 2 to 3 uh, through wave, wave large, not more than that. And most of your uh, antennas which we will be talking now, they are resonant antennas. Although there are non-resonant antennas are also there, but what we will be talking about, they are resonant antennas which means their uh, bigger dimension will be comparable to half wavelength. Okay. So now with this uh, introduction about the printed antennas, we can now go over to the uh, planar, uh, planar antennas. Basically planar antenna is a general term, 
printing antenna is something which is uh, referring to the technology aspect because you are using printed circuit technology. And these are printed and printed uh, the planar antennas means uh, planar means uh, the characteristics of the circuits or antenna which is determined by the dimensions in one plane. So, for example, to give you an idea about uh, these things, uh, the lumped elements R, L and C etcetera, they are called zero dimensional element because they do not, uh, their characteristic does not depend upon the dimension as such. Whereas, the transmission lines, uh, their characteristic dep de depends upon length. Okay. The two dimensional or planar circuits or antenna means uh, those type of uh, circuits or antenna where their characteristics are determined by the two dimensions, not the third dimension. It be it, uh, the characteristic is independent of one particular dimension whereas the other two dimensions determine their characteristics. The example of uh, these uh, planar circuits or antenna or two dimensional circuits or antennas are mostly you can say microstrip circuits, uh, slot line circuits or antennas and there are other uh, similar uh, these uh, circuits are there. Basically, they are based on uh, planar transmission lines like microstrip line, slot line, coplanar waveguide, coplanar strips, these are all planar transmission lines and circuits and antennas derived out of these using these transmission lines are called planar antennas and they are, their characteristic is determined by the dimension in one plane, not along the thickness. It is independent, the characteristic is independent of the thickness that is the substrate thickness, but the other two dimensions determine its characteristics. And in a three dimensional case like you have the waveguide circuits or waveguide antennas, in those cases the characteristics are determined by all the three dimensions. That is the difference between zero dimensional, one dimensional, two dimensional and three dimensional circuits and antennas. So, planar antenna means uh, these characteristics are determined by the two particular dimensions and that is, that is a very big advantage also in design as well as manufacture, fabrication. Okay. Now, let us go, uh, this is the overall uh, you can say the breakup, uh, we will be talking about microstrip antennas because this is although planar antennas. Uh, are just not microstrip antenna alone. Uh, there are various uh, categories which are included in planar antennas. Microstrip antenna is the prime one because most of this activity in planar antennas started with microstrip antennas. Then there are antennas which are called slot line antennas based on slot line. Then there are antennas which are CPW antennas, CPW, CPS that is normally called coplanar lines. Okay. So, there are various types and a combination of these and in order to let us say link up with what we are talking about planar antennas with metamaterials, the metamaterials also I think you must have learnt something, have you learnt something about metamaterials? Huh? You must have an introductory lecture. So, metamaterial also uses the same technology as is being used for planar circuits and antennas. Mostly it is a two dimensional thing that is it uses the printed circuit technology and especially this uh, metamaterial is very useful for improving the performance of uh, planar circuits and antennas and it is easy to realize. Basically, metamaterial you must have heard about it, it is a sort of a artificial dielectric. It is not a, it is made out of a real dielectric by loading it with the particular values of L and C periodically to achieve some values which are not available in nature, like uh, uh, relative dielectric constant less than 1 or negative relative dielectric constant, and from which you can derive lots of other properties. Anyway, 
So, uh, we go first start with the microstrip antennas, just introduce and uh, how the uh, second part is analysis of microstrip antennas that how do we analyze and I think you will have a little bit of design aspect also. Uh, then there is one particular category which we call loaded microstrip antennas. The idea of introducing the loaded microstrip antennas over here that if you use a uh, very general type of microstrip antennas, uh, the size of the antenna minimum one dimension will be something like lambda by 2. But if you load the same antenna selectively with uh, capacitance or inductance or maybe some varactors etcetera, then you can not only reduce the size of the antenna, make it more compact, but you can achieve so many other functions also, which you cannot achieve uh, if you just use a uh, unloaded microstrip antenna, that it improves the capability of these antennas, okay? make, make them more useful. Then we have active integrated antennas. That is, you want to achieve the introduce the active circuit aspect also, like combine with them amplifier, oscillator, as a part of the uh, overall syst subsystem. Antenna integrated with these ones. That's the, they are called active integrated antennas. Uh, there is uh, one particular problem with uh, microstrip antennas, or for that matter in uh, slot antennas and others also and that limitation is in terms of surface waves because there is a substrate over there uh, surface waves get excited and some of the power goes into the surface waves rather than going into radiation and that reduces the radiation efficiency of the antenna okay and last this topic is bandwidth enhancement. In fact, uh, this uh, bandwidth enhancement uh, started with the uh, problem faced in the microstrip antennas that they are relatively the bandwidth is less, something of the order of uh, 2 to 3 percent depending upon the thickness of the substrate and dielectric constant of the substrate. So that was the first major limitation one comes across when one starts using the uh, these printed antennas. And you know that uh, the uh, bandwidth requirement normally when you want to transmit lot number of channels, you need more bandwidth. So the how to increase the bandwidth of the antenna, that is the next topic and finally the conclusion. Okay. Uh, this uh, slide gives you an idea how does a microstrip antenna in its primitive form looks like. You can see that here what we see here this one is the first of all this is the substrate, uh, this is the substrate part of it and uh, in fact, this substrate has metallization on both sides. So, lower one here there is a metallization and the top metallization it has been etched out selectively to give rise to uh, this pattern. Actually, this is a rectangular microstrip radiator, this particular portion. And you can see one dimension is lambda by 2 like any resonant antenna and the other dimension could be anything, it could be less than lambda by 2 or more than slightly more than lambda by 2. And this is a feed line, this is a microstrip feed line. Okay. So, what we are having over here is a rectangular microstrip patch in a very simple design, just like any dipole antenna, 
you know that if you want to design a wire dipole, its length will be lambda by 2. So, this is this length is now controlling the resonant frequency lambda by should be lambda by 2 and this length dimension the other dimension will control the bandwidth of the antenna. Okay. And for exciting this antenna, we are using a this is a microstrip line what has been shown over here this strip this strip along with the ground plane that constitutes the microstrip line. So, basically what you have on your printed circuit boards you must have seen some of the lines running parallel to each other, but if you put a ground plane underneath on the other side of the substrate or the board all of these become microstrip lines. Okay. And, and the width of this line width of this uh, line metallization that determines its characteristics that the characteristic impedance, the guide wavelength or effective dielectric constant and there are very simple design rules. How to design this microstrip line for let us say 50 ohm or any other one and depends upon the strip width as well as the substrate parameters. Okay. So, this is a feed line with the rectangular microstrip patch radiator. Uh, as such the substrate over here which we are using substrate is used only to support the metallization. It has uh, no other function it has only a mechanical uh, function over here. You can use any substrate over here any substrate material, but since the field lines there will be field lines between the top metallization and the ground planes electric field lines will be there. So, the some of the characteristics of the antenna will get affected if the substrate is lossy. So, although the substrate is used just as a mechanical support for this uh, top, met top metallization with respect to the ground plane, but if it is lossy it will affect its characteristics that is the radiation some of the power will get lost into the substrate and naturally the radiation efficiency will decrease. And it affects uh, other characteristics also the uh, first of all the bandwidth, the radiation efficiency and third is the size. Because when we say that the uh, this dimension of the antenna is lambda by 2, this lambda is not the wavelength in free space this is the wavelength in the dielectric. So, what it means here is lambda is basically lambda 0 over square root epsilon r, where lambda 0 is the free space wavelength, the uh, wavelength or the corresponding frequency at which you want to design and epsilon r is the relative dielectric constant of the substrate. So, you can see that if you use a uh, substrate with a higher dielectric constant the size of the antenna accordingly gets reduced by the square root of the dielectric constant. So, uh, the presence of the substrate makes the antenna compact slightly smaller in size, but at the same time you cannot go on increasing the value of epsilon r to make it uh, smaller and smaller various types of substrates are available for use at microwave frequencies and some tight knit substrates I think they can have uh, epsilon r greater than 40, 50 or maybe even higher, but you cannot use, a, use those substrates over here. The reason is the radiation from the antenna is determined by uh, what we call the fringing field that is when we excite this antenna there are going to be some sort of fields like this between the top metallization and ground plane which will go curved between this edge between 
top uh, metallization edge and the ground plane, although there will be fields between the top metallization and ground plane which will be going straight. So, for example, uh, let me just show you just one edge, uh, this is the one edge of the patch antenna, this is ground plane. Most of the electric field lines these are the vertical lines, vertical electric field lines, but there are these field lines which are called fringing fields because they are not straight and you can resolve them. into these components and the larger the fringing over here, it is the fringing this part of it which is responsible for radiation. So, for example, if you uh, would have used, you, ca you can use it as a part of the uh, circuit also that you can use this uh, part as a resonator and in a resonator you do not want that there should be radiation just for the circuit application, you want that the radiation should not be there, okay, because that is a waste, but in an antenna you want there should be more of radiation to increase the radiation efficiency. In fact, you want that all the power which is going into the antenna that should get radiated and in order to increase the radiation, we should have more and more of this fringing field. This is your substrate. and the fringing field increases if the value of the dielectric constant is less. So, your endeavor should be that you should use epsilon r is equal to 1 to maximize the radiation efficiency, whereas you should use uh, epsilon r very high epsilon r value if you want to use uh, this board for the circuit application microwave circuit application because there are planar circuits, planar antennas. So, for planar circuits we use a high dielectric constant substrate and whereas for antennas we use low dielectric constant that is uh, epsilon r should be low and the substrate thickness h should be high. So, these are the two factors which distinguish the effect of substrate for circuit application and for antenna application. For antenna application, this should be the combination. For circuit application, it should be other way, epsilon r should be high and h should be uh, less. So, that most of the uh, field is confined between the top metallization and the ground plane. And in fact, it is a very simple model which explains lots of things uh, about the radiation characteristics of these antennas, the radiation pattern, the efficiency, the effect of substrate, even the bandwidth. In fact, you will see that this factor affects the bandwidth of the antenna also. Sir, yeah. What about the W? Uh, okay. If we increase the W? If you increase the W, you get a slightly larger bandwidth. That is what I said when I talked about this dimension, the other dimension of the rectangular patch antenna, that if you want to have a larger bandwidth, uh, you better you can take uh, this dimension slightly more than lambda by 2. Okay. Okay, so and apart from whatever I have shown over here, the rectangular patch, there are other patch shapes available. This is the simplest type and easy to analyze also because when you want to analyze a rectangular geometry, then a, the function which you have to use to describe the field distribution or current distribution is sine and cos functions. There are other geometries which are equally useful is a circular patch. 
you can have triangular patch that is the circular patch of some radius a you can replace this rectangular patch by a circular patch and the characteristics will be more or less similar there are triangular patch triangular shape scare is just a, a simple a modification that two dimensions are same uh, then there are various uh, I think pentagonal is there, various shapes are there. Only thing is that one of the dimension is going to be around lambda by 2. One difference between the rectangular patch and circular patch is that area wise the circular patch is more compact than the rectangular patch, but only marginally, not very much difference. Okay. Yeah, that has been done. In fact, when you try to analyze the triangular patch, in fact, in the triangular patch also you can have equilateral triangle, you can have right angle triangle, you can have isosceles triangle, all sorts of triangles are there. And uh, the triangular patch have been mostly uh, designed by setting up the equivalence between the triangular patch and the circular patch. So, they define the especially while designing it there are uh, the main thing is you design try to find out what is called effective dielectric constant. Uh, there is uh, one term used for these planar circuits and antennas which makes them very different from the uh, usual uh, let us say non printed uh, circuits and antennas is that the effective dielectric constant or the dielectric constant which a circuit or antenna really looks into or experiences is not exactly the dielectric constant of the substrate. The reason is see although we have written this expression over there that uh, uh, lambda this expression I have written earlier that the wavelength which this uh, patch antenna experiences is approximately lambda 0 over this one, but actual value is it should be corrected with effective dielectric constant. The reason is that had all these field lines starting from here let us say this is at positive potential this is at 0. The field lines starting from here to here, but uh, some of the field lines they go into the air also like this. Okay. So, so, because some of the field lines are not in, in the air and most of the field lines are between the uh, metallization and the ground plane that is within the substrate. The overall uh, dielectric constant experienced by this geometry is not this epsilon r is effective dielectric constant experienced by this is less than epsilon r because some of the field lines are in the air. Okay. That is true for all the printed lines, printed circuits, printed antennas because everything depends upon the field distribution. Okay. So, uh, while designing this uh, triangular patch or some other patch, we try to find out first of all what is the effective dielectric constant and from the effective dielectric constant we will get the effective dimension. And while designing this triangular patch antenna, we try to express the effective dielectric constant of this triangular patch in terms of the effective dielectric constant of a circular patch. Assuming that both of these, if they have the same area, metallization area, 
then their effective dielectric constant will be similar. Okay. The reason and the one of the reasons how we, we are able to do like this is the various modes in the triangular patch and the circular patch they have a similar field distribution. That is the reason. Any other question? Uh, in fact, for rectangle, uh, rectangular, see the um, mode, uh, the field distribution for the various modes in the triangular patch is comparable to the uh, modal field distribution in the circular patch, but they do not compare with the modal field distribution in the rectangular patch. So, we try to establish the relationship between this and that only, not with respect to the rectangular patch. Okay. Okay, that is uh, part of it we have already talked about. That is, these microstrip antennas, they are lightweight, they are low volume, they are thin profile configuration, that is, they can be made conformal, that is, you can bend them and stick to the uh, surface where you want to use it. Say, for example, if you have a pillar which is rounded. You can make your antenna you know, on a thin substrate and stick it on that one. It will work almost as good as if it is a just a planar surface. That is the biggest advantage, especially let us say if you want to uh, paste an antenna on the surface of an aeroplane on the wings etcetera, you can do it. You can in fact, uh, some of the antennas which were tested in the very beginning, they were used on the missiles. Missiles have this cylindrical shape. So, you design the antenna, fabricate on a very thin substrate and paste it on the surface of the missile. Okay. Uh, they can be pasted on glass, glass pane of automobiles. Okay. Uh, they have low fabrication cost and readily amenable to mass production. That is what we talked about that uh, when you use the printed circuit technology. Uh, uh, it makes it uh, very cheap because from one master you can have a number of these thing pieces which will have the same performance. Okay. Linear and circular polarizations are possible with simple feed. That uh, you must have heard about uh, one of the characteristics of the antennas is what is the polarization of the antenna, whether it is a linearly polarized antenna, whether it is a circularly polarized antenna. For some application, we need circularly polarized antenna. And uh, here in this case, if you want to have a circular polarization, you do not have to do much. You can use the same patch, just change the feed location. Say, for example, uh, Can you tell me something about the circular polarization? How do you achieve circular polarization? What is the circular polarization? By keeping the magnitude of the electrical vector constant from where it passes to different the IC constants. The phase remains constant 90 degree between the EH component and the EY component. Okay, let us go back. First of all, uh, what is polarization? Basically, it is the orientation of the electric field. Say, if the electric field, let us say, remains oriented like this with respect to time, it does not change. At the most, it may become from here, this to this with time, then it is called linearly polarized. It could be like this, it could be like this, or it could be like this, or all of these are linearly polarized. That the orientation of the electric field remains same with time, does not change with time, that is called linear polarization. But if the polarization, let us say at t is equal to 0, is like this.
at t is equal to let us say t by 4, t by 4 is t stands this capital T stands for the time period because it has a frequency and from frequency you can find out the time period. And let us say at t by 4 it goes becomes like this and then at t is equal to pi by 2 changes to this one and like this that is it the electric field vector rotates with time like this then it is not a linear polarization. If it changes there is any change during the one period orientation of the electric field changes then it is not a linear polarization. Then there could be various possibilities that if the electric field vector makes a some sort of complete circle going like this and its magnitude remains same like in a circle moves then it is called circularly polarized or it could trace an ellipse that at t is equal to 0 it is like this then it becomes like this the magnitude of this vector changes so that it traces an ellipse then it calls a elliptically polarized. So, between the circularly polarized and elliptically polarized the difference is the magnitude of the electric vector does not change although it rotates and the way it rotates it could be right hand circularly polarized that is if it is rotates like this it is one type and if it rotates like this then it is a different type. One is called left hand circularly polarized other is called right hand circularly polarized. Okay. So, there are the polarization of the electric field is determined by the orientation of the electric vector with time. So, when we say that one can have linearly polarized antenna, circular polarized antennas with a simple feed, what we mean is just to give you an example, let us say we take a this is a scare patch. And if you, uh, this is the metallization, I am just showing the top view. And if you let us say feed it either here on this edge or this edge, you will get linearly polarized antenna. But if you feed it along the diagonal, either this diagonal or this diagonal you can have the feed here or here somewhere here or on this diagonal then you will get circularly polarized antenna. For circular polarization two orthogonal modes need to be excited that you say for example, let us say we, when we talk about uh, the electric vector like this for circular polarization at particular instant the electric vector is going to be like this and this consists of one component this and one component this okay, vertical and horizontal and both these components should have the same amplitude which will give rise to this one. So, for circular polarization you need to create two polarizations horizontal and vertical which are of the same amplitude and 90 degree phase difference. 90 degree phase difference is very important otherwise it will not rotate with time. So, for the same reason in order to get circular polarization over here you need to excite two modes which have 
which uh, out of which one mode gives you uh, horizontal polarization, other gives you the vertical polarization and the phase difference of 90 degree. And this is possible in a scare patch antenna when you excite it along say diagonal. When the feed is somewhere here along the diagonal, it will excite two modes which will have the same resonant frequency, uh, uh, different polarization that is orthogonal polarizations and a phase difference of 90 degree. Whereas, if you wanted to have the circular polarization in conventional antennas, that is much more difficult. Here by just changing the feed position from here to here, you can get circular polarization. That is what we are talking about. Yeah. Yeah, actually in this case, uh, it is convenient instead of having the micro strip feed because uh, you are uh, feeding it at uh, over here and using a micro strip feed will be somewhat inconvenient taking it inside. Okay. So, you can have a, it is better to have a coaxial feed which is coming from the back side of the antenna. Say for example, let us go back. If in this case itself, you want to feed it with a coaxial, in fact there are various types of feeds available so that your antenna is compatible with the rest of the circuitry. So, micro strip feed is one type, you can use a coaxial connector. Okay. So, linear and circular polarizations are possible with a simple feed. Uh, we can have dual frequency antenna and dual polarization antennas. You can have a dual frequency antenna using a single feed. So, for example, uh, if you have a, a rectangular patch, this is a rectangular patch, uh, one it will have two frequencies of resonance. One is determined by this dimension and other is determined by the, this dimension. So, if you feed it along the diagonal, let us say, you can excite this mode as well as this mode with different frequencies. The resonant frequency, one is determined by this dimension which is larger and the resonant frequency will be lower. Corresponding to this dimension which is smaller, the resonant frequency will be higher. So, there are two distinct resonant frequency, only thing is whether with a particular feed position you can excite both these modes. So, yeah, what you can do is you can put a feed along the diagonal and then it, it will be able to excite the mode corresponding to this dimension as well as this dimension. That is a very simple way of having a dual frequency antenna. Okay. Uh, dual polarizations are also possible. Actually, in this case, the polarization will also be dual. In one case, for this one, it will depend upon uh, it will the this will be the polarization of the radiated field. For but corresponding this dimension, this will be the polarization. So the polarizations will also be orthogonal in this case. Okay. Okay feed lines and matching networks can be fabricated simultaneously. In fact, the antenna when we use the antenna, it is not just the antenna alone. Say for example, when you use it as a part of the transmitter, there will be the rest of the circuitry behind it. When you want to use it as a receiver antenna, there will be the rest of the portion of the receiver and it with this transmitter and antenna rest, rest transmitter portion or the receiver portion will require rest of the RF circuitry including the feed line. So, you can design and fabricate the rest of the RF circuitry along with the antenna and in put everything together. You do not have to separately create uh, let us say the RF amplifier and then uh, uh, power from the RF amplifier is fed to this antenna, no, no, no you do not have to do it separately. You can put everything together and that will improve the performance of your overall system because you do not have to put in between the transitions etcetera and block by block, it will improve the uh, uh, reliability of the overall system and cut, cut down the cost also. That is all of the RF circuitry which you need along with the antenna that can be designed and fabricated along with the printed antenna. 
So that is a very big advantage that is feed lines and matching networks can be fabricated simultaneously with the antenna structure. Okay. Can be integrated with the display of the handset terminals. There are printed antennas uh, which you can make it as a part of the handset terminal. In fact, uh, yesterday I think there was in the news that uh, uh, there are some uh, these uh, handset terminals available which can be powered by uh, solar cell and I think uh, this will work for about 10 minutes stack or something like that. So what you can do is one, uh, one of the very simple ways is that for the antenna you need the patch metallization. The patch metallization instead of being made of uh, let us say just the copper sheet you can use a material which can pick up uh, energy from the uh, solar solar energy and convert it into corresponding the uh, low frequency energy. So you can use this uh, patch metallization not only for as your antenna, but you can, you can use it for collecting the solar converting solar energy into this one. So that is uh, what we are talking about it can be integrated with the display put it in the display. Okay. There are some materials and some studies carried out in that respect. Uh, this can be easily, these antennas can be easily integrated micro integrated circuits to give, give rise to what we call integrated active antenna. Okay. And they can be integrated with the package chips to give rise to what we call integrated circuit packaged antenna. These days, you know that the chips, RF chips, are becoming smaller and smaller. The main RF chip in your handset terminal, do you, can you think of what will be the size of that chip? RF chip in your handset terminal. It will be hardly uh, 2 to 3 millimeter by 2 to 3 millimeter, that is all. That is the size of the RF chip. Okay. And normally it will be packaged and the package part of it, package portion of it, you can use it as a part of your antenna. So they can be integrated so that the overall size can be reduced. But it is somewhat difficult unless uh, you are going to very high frequencies because normally we talk about dimension of the cheap antenna of the order of lambda by 8 by lam or lambda by 10. So unless uh, this thing can come come within few millimeter chip size is there even with the package chip will be something like not more than 5 millimeter by 5 millimeter and if you think of just 5 millimeter by 5 millimeter area half centimeter by half centimeter should be sufficient for your chip uh, this antenna that requires lot of effort especially if you are working let us say at 900 megahertz or 1.8 gigahertz higher frequency it is okay one can do it. Okay. Okay, that is what we said that it is most useful when the communication terminal is to be carried along and for aerospace applications. So this is what we have talked about why these antennas. Now there are some li limitations as we know that uh, there are large ohmic losses in the feed structure of the arrays relatively because when you are using uh, uh, in the array configuration the array uh, the feed part of the array becomes quite uh, is very large normally when do you use for array application okay for a single antenna it's okay where you uh, when you use for a handset terminal you use only a, a single antenna not an array but you need an array also sometimes when you in want to increase, a, want to have a directive beam or you want to have a large antenna gain that you need to have number of elements which are to be fed properly in amplitude and phase and naturally this uh, feed part takes lot of space. And since these uh, feed lines are relatively lossy compared to the waveguides, so we say that especially for the array application it could become lossy. But there is a way to take care of this problem that most of the time when they use microstrip antenna as an in the form of an array 
they try to devise the feed part in the form of a waveguide feed part rather than in, a, in the microstrip configuration. So, that way you can reduce the feed losses. Okay. So, it relates to uh, only for when you in the array application, array antennas, not for a single element case. Most microstrip antennas radiate into half space. You have seen that uh, the basic configuration of a microstrip patch antenna, there is a ground plane on the other side. And since the, there is a ground plane on one side, radiation cannot go beyond that one. So, they radiate into half space, but this is uh, now no longer a problem. Uh, you do not have to use microstrip antenna always, you can use a slot antenna. Slot antenna is just a complementary to the microstrip antenna. That is wherever you have metallization, remove the metallization, wherever you do not have the metallization, put the metallization over there. So, the uh, let us say complementary to this rectangular patch or square patch will be something like this. This is a scare slot antenna that on the top side, the top surface of the substrate, you have the metallization and out of the metallization you have removed a scare slot, made cut a scare slot over there. And where there was a ground plane earlier, you have removed that ground plane, there is no ground plane now. So, so far as the metallization of a slot antenna is there, it is complementary to that of a patch antenna, microstrip patch antenna. And this scares, uh, this slot antenna uh, will radiate on both the sides because there is no ground plane on the other side. So, you can take care of this problem which is uh, there in the microstrip antenna and not there in the slot antenna. Another advantage with slot antennas is that they have a larger bandwidth compared to the patch antenna because part of the bandwidth limitation of the microstrip patch antenna is because of the uh, thickness of the substrate and that ground plane, because fields are confined between the top metallization and the ground plane and that affects the bandwidth of the antenna. But here the field distribution is not like that. Field distribution will be in the slot, maybe something like this, that is all. There will be some field distribution going from here to the substrate but they do not affect the uh, bandwidth of the antenna. So, these uh, slot antennas, they not, on, not only radiate uh, 360 degree, but they have a relatively larger bandwidth also, because fields are not confined between uh, the top metallization and there is no such ground plane over here. So, field confinement is less and as a result the bandwidth is more. Uh, scare patch antenna, okay, okay that is an entirely different topic. Uh, uh, these are utilized for fractal antennas, only thing is that in a fractal antenna what you mean is, uh, they are copies of the same antenna, but scale down copies of the same antenna. Say for example, you have a one scare patch, there will be another scare patch, but dimension may be half of that, dimension may be one third of the scare patch antenna. There will be next one, which is again one third of the, one ninth of the first patch. So, you create copies, uh, which are scaled down version of the starting one. And naturally, the resonant frequency of these antennas being determined by their original dimensions uh, so, they will have a corresponding uh, ratio in the resonant frequency. If uh, first one is resonating at F0 and second one is uh, scaled down version by half, second one will, will have the resonant frequency 2 F0, third one will have the resonance frequency 4 F0 like this. So, you can create fractal antennas which are multi band in nature and 
naturally the space required in the same space you can accommodate the various multiple copies or scale down versions. So, how we can use one vector antenna with scale shape? Uh, like we are taking the midpoints in triangular, we are taking the midpoints, then making a triangle, then triangle. Huh. No, scare, scare is there. The scare is uh, what is called, uh, I think, uh, particular gasket antenna. This is called, and the uh, scares can also be arranged in a particular format. And if you look into the literature, you can find out which is based on the triangular shape as well as the scare shape. I think uh, it is not Sierpinski gasket. It is some other gasket is there, which is called. Uh, not this one. It is a using the scare patches, you can have a fractal over there. Okay. Now, let us come back. So, this is not a limitation, although microstrip antennas have this limitation that radiate into half space, but you can use the slot antennas where if you want radiation in both the sides or 360 degree. Okay. Uh, require complex feed structure for high performance arrays. Although it is there, I do not think that it is really a limitation, one can design it easily. Okay. Poor end fire radiators accept tapered slot antenna. Again, although microstrip antennas have a particular, uh, uh, now if we go to the look at the radiation pattern of the uh, rectangular or these patch antennas, most of the radiation like a dipole one, they will be maximum radiation in the zenith direction that in this direction, it will give you the maximum radiation and radiation in this direction that is which we call end fire, normally the radiation will be much less. Like any uh, dipole antenna, you know that for a dipole antenna, the radiation pattern is something like this, figure of 8. Uh, Let us say, if I locate the dipole like this, that means there is a maximum radiation in this direction and this direction and there is hardly any radiation in this direction. So, like any dipole radiator, this patch radiator is also a poor end fire radiator. It would not give the radiation will be almost 0 in this direction, but there is a another antenna uh, which we call it as a tapered slot. Yeah, this is one of the slot antennas. Maybe I can cut down right. This is a slot antenna. Yeah, this is slot, and the width of the slot is increasing as you go this side. That's why it is called a tapered slot antenna. And this tapered slot antenna, it uh, works like just a transmission line. That if you feed it from here, the electric field will be like this. And it will be curved like this over here. So, it like, acts like a transmission line. Basically, it is a slot line, which is uh, tapering. And why you need to tapering is that here the impedance should be free space impedance. And here the impedance should match the impedance of the uh, your source. Source will be normally 50 ohm. So, the dimension of the, the slot should be such that, that the impedance of the slot line should be 50 ohm. And here it should be, what should be the free space impedance? 125. So, I designed the slot so that here it is 50 ohm, characteristic impedance should be 50 ohm, and the here the characteristic impedance of the slot is 125, free space impedance. Basically, all your antennas are like that. You are trying to match the source impedance 
to the free space impedance. They are transducer only, passive transducer. So you just taper it like this and the impedance will increase to this one, feed it over here and in this case since it is a transmission line, the radiation will be in this direction, okay. So you will get the, this end fire radiator, okay and it is a very efficient one and bandwidth is quite large. In fact, this is one of the antennas uh, where you need some multi octave bandwidth, you use this type provided you have sufficient space available with you, okay. It is not a resonant antenna, it is a non-resonant antenna, okay. Okay, then extraneous radiation from feeds and junctions, that is uh, we will see later on when we talk about the feeds, that uh, most of these antennas give rise to some radiation from wherever there are some discontinuities in the metallization. Uh, by proper design, one is able to reduce that extraneous radiation or there are ways that the feed part, instead of being on the same side where the antenna is there, if the feed part is on the other side of the ground plane of the antenna, then this radiation do not combine with the radiation from the antenna, you can separate them out. Okay, we will see when we talk about the feeds. Uh, unacceptably high level of cross polarization mutual coupling with an array environment at high frequencies. Yeah, cross polarization is a real problem, uh, but for some of the applications like for your uh, mobile systems like you have for the handset, polarization is no consideration over there but you are receiving the signal is through a randomly polarized one. That is not a consideration over here, but for some applications like for satellite communication and the polarization is really a consideration, but in those cases we try to use circularly polarized antennas, okay. And mutual coupling, uh, it is possible to reduce the mutual coupling, let me say at this point without elaborating on it. Okay. okay, these are some basic antenna shapes, this is a scare which you know is uh, very useful uh, for circularly polarized, you want to use, uh, normally it is used for circularly polarized antenna with a single feed, actually it will not be exactly scare, one dimension will be slightly different from the other one by something like 1 percent. Okay, the two dimensions are different by about 1 percent, okay. Particular reason is uh, for circular polarization you need uh, two frequency, two modes which should be nearly identical, Free resonant frequency should be similar, but the phase difference should be 90 degree to excite the circular polarization. And in order to achieve that phase difference of 90 degree, you have to have the two dimensions slightly different from each other, okay, otherwise you will not get the phase difference of 90 degree, okay. So this is a circular disc, this is a rectangle, elliptical, equilateral triangle, there is a ring antenna, but so far as uh, their radiation characteristics are concerned, if since these are all resonant, the resonant frequency, the dimensions, etc., and the radiation pattern, even the gain they are more or less similar. The difference is that uh, depending upon your, let us say the space available or what type of shape of the space available, you may try to fit in equilateral triangle over there or uh, you may try to fit disc, disc will be slightly compact compared to the rectangular patch for the same resonant frequency, okay. Now there is uh, uh, another antenna which is quite useful, it is a printed version of the dipole, you have the dipole with two arms, so here also this is one arm of this one on one surface of the substrate and the other arm is on the other side and you know that the dipole is a balanced antenna, 
Okay, the feed has to be a balanced type. Microstrip feed, microstrip is not a balanced type. So use a printed this thing, uh, this uh, what we call it as a uh, uh, either you can call it as twin lead transmission line or you can call it as a parallel plate line. So parallel plate line is used to feed this printed dipole. The bandwidth of a printed dipole is slightly more than the bandwidth of your uh, patch antenna. The reason again is same that there is uh, no ground plane on the other side. There is one metallization, this metallization on one side and this metallization on the other side. So it radiates in, three, it gives radiation in the 360 degree, okay, unlike the patch antenna. Uh, these are some of slot antennas, printed slot antennas. So only the top metallization is shown over here. You can see over here, uh, you have, this is the top metallization, only one metallization is there for the slot antennas. We do not use both other metallization. The metallization on the other side is removed completely. And the uh, one metallization is now, you cut a slot, this is the slot over here which acts as an antenna. The, this dimension of the slot will be approximately lambda by 2 because it is a resonant slot. And this is on the other side which is shown dotted that is the feed line microstrip. So on the other side of the substrate this uh, microstrip line is there and this portion is used as a ground plane for the microstrip line. So this is a slot fed by a microstrip line on the other side. Uh, this is a rectangular slot. Similarly, you can have a uh, annular slot and again fed by a microstrip on the other side. This is again a, a, ring, a rectangular ring slot is there and this is being fed by a, this is CPW line. This line is called coplanar waveguide. Uh, the reason why you find different type of feed lines are there, you will find that uh, feed lines are in the form of microstrip, coaxial, CPW, CPS and CPW feed line is becoming quite common these days because some of your RF circuitry or micro S circuitry especially uh, which you are using transistors etc. The configuration, the transistor configuration and the configuration of CPW line, they are compatible. So if you are taking a power output using a, uh, this thing, uh, what, is, what is called uh, fat based, mass fat based transistor amplifier, then better you use this CPW line, they will be compatible, okay. Now again, these are again, uh, some slots are there. This is slot, again being fed by CPW, one type of slot. Again, this slot is there which is fed by CPW and this is, again we are talking about the tapered slot antenna. This is uh, same uh, slot line having the same characteristic impedance throughout and then there is a tapering and it is fed by a microstrip line at right angle to each other. So whenever you want to feed a slot, with a microstrip, the two have to be at right angle to each other so that the power can transfer 100 percent from the microstrip to the slot line. Otherwise, there won't be coupling between the two, okay. Uh, these are traveling wave antennas. Earlier, what we talked about, uh, these, ant these antennas are mostly uh, uh, resonant antennas. And resonant antenna, because of their resonant nature, they have a bandwidth limitation. Only some 5 percent or maximum something like bandwidth you can utilize, okay, because of the resonant. There are non-resonant antennas, mostly in the form of uh, traveling wave type antennas. So this is one type, you from a microstrip, you introduce some sort of a stubs and uh, at the end of the stub there will be radiation and the power starts from here, it goes on, radiates, goes to feed this one, radiates here, then it feeds the next up, radiates from here and all these things. So it is a one of the traveling wave antenna. Similarly, you feed it from here and the power 
uh, it will be radiated by this ring, then this ring, then this ring and rest of the power what is remaining gets absorbed in the load over here. All traveling antennas have similar configuration. This is another type, another type and this here uh, tapered slot antenna that is also a traveling wave type. Okay. So, they have some their major characteristics that the radiation patterns can be the frequency, this is the characteristic of traveling of antennas, can be designed for circular pol polarization and end fire radiation can be obtained easily. Mm -hmm.